I've made a few videos looking at DC Comics' live action histories of certain characters like Batman, Superman, and The Flash to look at which one of their respective surrounding worlds and characters took the longest or shortest amount of time to appear in live action from their comic book debut. This video will be doing the same thing, but not for any specific character, instead for the entire Justice League. I do have some rules for this video, however, as I will not be going over every single Justice League member or Justice League villain, as then I'll basically be including the entire DC Universe. I will not include, for instance, characters who are more prominently members of other teams, like Nightwing or Doctor Fate, as those teams, the Teen Titans and the Justice Society, may potentially get their own videos. I also won't include any villains like Black Adam, Lex Luthor, Lobo, or Captain Cold, who temporarily joined the Justice League in a stint or a stunt or something where they turn good for a brief amount of time because it doesn't really feel like a real membership. I will however include villains who are strictly Justice League villains, so no members of the Legion of Doom who are villains of individual heroes but also fight the Justice League at times, with the sole exception of Darkseid who is a Superman villain but also at the same time a Justice League villain. On top of all of that, offshoot Justice League teams like Justice League Dark or the Rebirth JLA team will be considered for this video. So with all of that like 3 minutes of ground rules out of the way, let's see which Justice League character took the longest or shortest amount of time to debut in live action while simultaneously going over the live-action debut timeline of the Justice League's members, enemies, and supporting characters. The first one of these characters to debut in live-action is probably not who you'd expect. It's not one of the Trinity members, it's not even one of the founding members of the Justice League, it's actually Shazam. At the time, he was called Captain Marvel, as he would be up until the year 2011, but more importantly, he wasn't a part of the main DC Universe, nor was he even owned by DC Comics. He was owned by Fawcett Comics, and he debuted in the year 1940, just one year after Superman, but quickly overtook Superman as the biggest superhero in the world for a couple years, which is why, debuting in 1940 and debuting in 1941 in live action, it only took one year for him to debut in something called The Adventures of Captain Marvel. Marvel, as he is the first DC character to ever appear in live action. After Captain Marvel, it gets a bit more predictable for a little bit, as the next three characters are actually the Trinity. Starting in 1943, the Batman serial saw the debut of Batman in live action four years after he debuted in the comics. Five years after that, Superman made his live action debut in the Superman serials in the year 1948 with a 10 year gap. And then skipping all the way to 1967, there was a TV pilot which is really just five minutes long, so it's more so like test footage of Wonder Woman called Wonder Woman Who's Afraid of Diana Prince, which is technically her live action debut 25 years after her debut in the comics. The Legends of the Superheroes TV special aired in 1979 and saw the debut of quite a few very important Justice League members. So, going from largest gap to smallest, we start with Hawkman, who, alongside Hawkgirl and certain other characters, will be exceptions to the role I mentioned earlier of characters being more prominent members of the JSA, as both of those characters are very important members of both teams. Other characters like Cyborg and Wally West will also be in this video, despite also being very important members of the team. Titans, so there are exceptions to the rule, but Hawkman has a 39 year gap. The next character is Black Canary, however, it's not really clear which Black Canary she's based off of. It could be the original Dinah Drake, who was a member of the JSA, or her daughter Dinah Lance, who was more prominently a member of the Justice League. However, both characters have been members of the Justice League. They were kind of merged into one during the New 52 slash Rebirth era, so it's not really clear which one this is based off of. Either way, they would be in this video, but the original Black Canary would have a 32 year gap, while the Donna Lance version would only have a 10 year gap, so neither gap is really all that significant for the top 5 lists at the end of this video, as neither one of them is all that small or all that large. Founding member of the Justice League, Barry Allen aka The Flash, also debuted here with a 23 year gap alongside another founding member in Hal Jordan aka The Green Lantern with a 20 year gap, and very early on recruit Ray Palmer aka The Atom debuted here with an 18 year gap. 
Swamp Thing has had a surprising amount of TV shows and movies over the years, most of which have fallen under the radar, but considering he's a member of Justice League Dark and also at one point the Justice League, he will obviously be in this video, and his first live action debut was in Swamp Thing 1982, he has an 11-year gap. Superman the movie was not the live action debut of Superman, however the 1984 spin-off Supergirl was the live action debut of the titular character, Supergirl debuted in the comics 25 years prior. In 1997, there was an attempt at a Justice League TV show which never got past the pilot, as the pilot was fairly terrible, but it did see the live action debut of a lot of important Justice Leaguers, and more importantly, the Justice League International members, as also a lot of these characters have yet to appear since in live action. So, starting from the smallest gap this time, we have Ice, who debuted in the comics nine years prior, as well as Fire, who actually appeared in the comics long before Ice, she has an 18 year gap. Then there's also the Green Lantern from this TV show pilot, Guy Gardner, who has only ever appeared in this pilot and that's it, and he has a 29 year gap. And the largest gap we've seen so far from this episode also is Martian Manhunter, who had a very small role in this episode and his design is pretty garbage, but it is technically his live action debut and he has a 42 year gap. Also in 1997 is Steel, which saw the debut of Steel, played by Shaquille O'Neal, and he appeared in the comics only four years prior for the first time. And that brings us to the 21st century, which is always when things start slowing down for these videos. Regardless, the first live action debut in the 21st century is actually from the year 2005, as the Keanu Reeves Constantine movie came out, seeing the live action debut of the titular character, and he has a bit of a debatable gap. He either debuted in Saga of the Swamp Thing number 25 or 37, as a character who looks like Constantine appeared in issue 27, before his official character debut in issue 37. This is is important since issue 25 came out in 1984, while issue 37 came out in 1985, so his gap is either 20 years or 21 years. It doesn't really matter either way since this definitely won't be a part of either top 5 list, but I thought it was worth mentioning. 2005 is also the year where Smallville started debuting Justice League members, and basically until the end of Smallville in the year 2011, for the timeline of this video, this video will basically be taken over by Smallville until then. This starts with Season 5 Episode 4 as Aquaman made his live action debut, with the largest gap we've seen so far at 64 years. However, this gap will not be the largest one for very long, as in the year 2006, first of all, there's Cyborg making his debut. He's one of the characters who will be both in this video and a potential Teen Titans video, as he's a very important member of both, he's also been a founding member of both in certain continuities, and he has a 26 year gap. Season 6 Episode 2 saw the live action debut of Oliver Queen aka Green Arrow, who actually debuted in the comics in the exact same issue as Aquaman, considering this is the next year, Green Arrow has already beaten Aquaman's record for this video, as he took 65 years to appear in live action for the first time. A villain named Curtis Knox appeared in Smallville Season 7 Episode 4, he was an immortal being who lived throughout history, who the showrunners later confirmed that it is in fact Vandal Savage. Savage in the comics is an enemy of several different heroes like the Green Lantern, the Flash, or other groups like the JSA, but the Justice League is definitely what he's the villain of the most in outside media, especially in animated content. Regardless, he definitely has a very large gap, similar to recent characters Aquaman and Green Arrow, as his gap is 64 years. Then in Smallville Season 8 Episode 4, now in 2008, a little known member known as Maxima, who wasn't a member for very long, made her live action debut 19 years after her debut in the comics. Zatanna made her live action debut in Smallville Season 8 Episode 17, which is also her only live action appearance so far, she has a 45 year gap. Like I said, this video will also include Justice League villains like Maxwell Lord, who debuted in Smallville Season 9 Episode 19 in the year 2010, with a 23 year gap, and then in the first episode of Smallville Season 10, still 2010, Darkseid actually made his live action debut with a 40 year gap. Smallville has another record breaker as Hawkgirl made her debut in episode 2 of season 10 with a 70 year gap. It is just a cameo and we don't actually see her as Hawkgirl and we wouldn't see a actual Hawkgirl in live action until the 2015 Hourverse crossover, however it definitely counts as the same character and she has the largest gap so far. 
In Smallville Season 10, Episode 9, Mera, who has been a member of the Justice League, especially in the New 52 comics, made her live-action debut with a 47-year gap. Ultraman is the only member of the Crime Syndicate to appear in live-action, debuting in Smallville Season 10, Episode 10, with a 46-year gap. I did include him in my Superman video, honestly, just because I wanted to. He's definitely more so a Justice League villain, as the Crime Syndicate don't really individually fight the heroes, they fight the Justice League as a team. Now in the year 2011, we're not actually done with Smallville yet, as Season 10, Episode 18 saw the debut of three Justice League members. There's Booster Gold with a 25-year gap, his best friend Ted Kord with a 45 year gap, although he didn't appear as Blue Beetle here and we haven't seen him since as Blue Beetle or at all, but we have seen Jaime Reyes as Blue Beetle in this episode and also in the 2023 movie that's coming out. He has a five year gap. I debated whether to include him here or in the Teen Titans video, as while in the comics he's more so a Justice League member, in most adaptations he's not, he's a Young Justice or a Teen Titans member, so I debated which one to include him, which of video to include him in, I could include him in both so it doesn't really matter, but I will include him here as well since in the comics he's actually more of a Justice Leaguer. So that's it for Smallville, and we could dive headfirst into the Arrowverse. Now, the DCEU also started around this time. However, I looked at every single movie, every single Justice League member, and even villain, and there are two total Justice League members who appear for the first time in live action in the DC Extended Universe. So do not expect a lot of DCEU. However, do expect a lot of Arrowverse, as they tended to use the lesser-known characters who have never appeared in live action before, starting Starting in Arrow Season 1 Episode 7 in 2012, as Helena Bertinelli aka The Huntress made her live action debut with a 23 year gap. Oh, actually, the episode right before that, which is Season 1, Episode 6, saw the live-action debut of Justice League Villains The Royal Flush Gang, who have a 48-year gap. Harbinger isn't really a Justice League character, nor is she really associated with the Justice League, but she's only really ever important during crisis level events, which are events that aren't really connected to any individual character, so if I'm to include these characters anywhere, like Harbinger or Pariah, I'd include them here. So Harbinger debuted in Arrow Season 1 Episode 19 as a very, very different sort of character. Lila Michaels was definitely more human and down to earth than she ever has been in the comics, and she doesn't become Harbinger until the Crisis on Infinite Earths event setup, but she has a 30 year gap. Arrow Season 1 Episode 22 saw the debut of Geoforce, kind of. If you've seen my worst adaptations video, you know how terrible an adaptation this is, but regardless, it is technically an adaptation with a 30 year gap. Anthony Ivo is a Justice League villain most famously known for creating Amazo, who debuted in Arrow Season 2 Episode 5 with a 53 year gap. Arrow Season 2 Episode 19 saw the live-action debuts of two characters who would go on to be main characters on The Flash, but don't really have any association to The Flash in the comics. There's Vibe, who debuted in the comics 30 years prior, and Caitlyn Snow aka Frost, who's the third version of Killer Frost, only debuting in the year 2013, meaning she only has a one-year gap. Now, if this was back in 2014, she wouldn't be considered at all since she was a villain. However, because of the Arrowverse turning her into a hero, her most prominent role that she ever had in the comics was actually as a hero and the member of the JLA. Because of the Arrowverse, they also removed the killer part of her name and turned her into just Frost. So she is kind of more of a hero than a villain in the comics, so I'm including her. So since Smallville started, it was really just Smallville and then Arrow, but from here on out, it will be flip-flopping between so many different shows, starting with Firestorm debuting in The Flash Season 1, Episode 3. This is the Ronnie Raymond version of Firestorm, who has a 36-year gap, although he wouldn't become Firestorm until the next year. Then there's Katana debuting in Arrow Season 3, Episode 9, with a 31-year gap. 2015 starts off with the live-action debut of another Firestorm named Jason Rush, who actually never becomes Firestorm in the Arrowverse. His role is completely replaced by a character named Jefferson Jackson. He doesn't need to become Firestorm to be the same character, however, so he appeared in Season 1, Episode 10 of The Flash and has an 11-year gap. Justice League villain Felix Faust debuted in Constantine Season 1, Episode 10 in the year 2015, and he has a 53-year gap. 
The Flash wasted no time with the Firestorm characters, as Martin Stein was the final Firestorm character that needed to debut, even though Jefferson Jackson would later debut as well. However, he will not be in this video since he isn't a Justice League member in the comics, but Martin Stein debuted in Season 1 Episode 12 with a 37 year gap. Then on Supergirl, Season 1 Episode 6 saw the debut of Red Tornado with a 47 year gap, as well as his villainous creator Tio Morrow with a 51 year gap. Arrow Season 4 Episode 5 saw the live action debut of Vixen, who debuted in the comics 34 years prior, and finally for 2015 is Wally West aka The Flash, who kind of maybe debuted in Season 2 Episode 9 of The Flash. I've been over this so many times in recent videos, but basically he's kind of an adaptation of Wally West, he's more so an adaptation of Wallace West in design and also personality, however, back when he debuted, Wallace West was really technically the new 52 version of Wally West, they didn't become two separate characters until the following year, with the 2016 DC-wide reboot of Rebirth, so while he's kind of an adaptation of Wally West, I'm counting it for this video, but he's definitely more so Wallace West. Regardless, however, he would be in this video and in the Teen Titans video, and he has a 55 year gap. For Wally, I won't be mentioning the Wallace gap since Wallace has never been a Justice League member, but I will mention both gaps in the Teen Titans video. Now in 2016, The Flash Season 2 Episode 13 had a bit of a tease to a Legends of Tomorrow episode, which saw the debut of Connor Hawk aka the Green Arrow. Kind of. This version of Connor Hawk ended up being John Diggle Jr., and then there's another version of Connor Hawk who is the son of Sandra Hawk, but not the son of Green Arrow. He's the son of Bronze Tiger. So while neither version of Connor Hawk is technically exactly the same, they are both adaptations of this character, so the original one, who debuted in 2016, has a 22 year gap. Jim Harper aka Guardian is a very old character debuting all the way back in the early 40s, so he actually holds the record for the largest gap we've seen so far, as he debuted in Supergirl Season 2 Episode 13, albeit never as Guardian and also as a one-off villain, but he has a 74 year gap. Supergirl Season 2 Episode 1 saw the live action debut of the main supporting Justice League character, that being Snapper Carr, a character I don't see working live action, which is also why on Supergirl they completely changed him. He is much older, he has no association to the Justice League, and he's just a grumpy old reporter. Regardless, it is the same character, and he has a 55 year gap. Prometheus is both a Batman villain, a Green Arrow villain, and a Justice League villain, and he's just as important as all three, so I would include him in all three potential videos, but Prometheus debuted in Arrow Season 5 Episode 1 with an 18 year gap. He has changed a bit given the name Simon Morrison, and combined with Vigilante's alter ego Adrian Chase, a name he uses as an alias while also acting as a lawyer like Adrian Chase did in the comics. And finally for 2016, Ragman, who's a Justice League Dark member, debuted in Arrow Season 5 Episode 2 with a 40 year gap. Ragman is the final character from 2016, but not the final entry, as in Legends of Tomorrow Season 2 Episode 5, the Legion of Doom made their live action debut. This team consists of the Reverse Flash, the Dark Archer, Damian Dark, and Captain Cold, and they debuted in live action 38 years after debuting for the first time, not in the comics, but in an episode of Super Friends, meaning it has a gap of 38 years. Now in 2017, The Flash Season 3 Episode 10 saw the live action debut of Justice League Detroit member Gypsy, who debuted in the comics 33 years prior. And then there's a TV show called Powerless, which debuted in 2017, which didn't debut anything throughout its season aside from the first episode, which saw the live action debut of the Justice League's first villain, Starro. I thought for sure this would go to the DCU in the Suicide Squad, but no, a couple years prior, Starro did cameo on Powerless, and he has a 57 year gap, and he was fighting a Justice Leaguer named Crimson Fox, who is a very unknown character, but she has been a member of the Justice League, most importantly during during the 90s, and she has a 31 year gap. Then there's Ralph Dibney, aka the Elongated Man, debuting in The Flash Season 4, Episode 4, with a 57 year gap, and the final character for 2017 is The Ray, or Ray Terrell, debuting in The Flash Season 4, Episode 8, which is also Part 3 of the Crisis on Earth X crossover, and he debuted in the comics 25 years prior. 
In 2018, Black Lightning started airing, and the first episode saw the debut of the titular character, Black Lightning, who debuted in the comics 41 years prior. And a little bit after that, Krypton started airing, and the first episode saw the live-action debut of Adam Strange, who isn't a Justice League member per se, but he has been a member of an offshoot Justice League team, as well as an honorary member of the main team, and he has a 60-year gap. In Supergirl Season 4 Episode 1, a little known hero known as Agent Liberty, who's only ever been used as a villain, and that's on this show, made his live action debut with a 27 year gap. At the end of 2018, the Elseworlds crossover in the Hourverse came out, which saw the debut of a couple different Justice League characters, mostly villains. There's the Monitor, who debuted in the episode prior to Elseworlds, that being Supergirl Season 4 Episode 7, with a 33 year gap. There's the Justice League villain Dr. Destiny, who debuted in The Flash Season 5 Episode 9, in the first part of Elseworlds, with a 57 year gap, although he's never called Dr. Destiny, and his name is changed from John D to John Deegan, he is definitely still an adaptation of the character, and an even more prominent Justice League villain is Amazo, debuting in the same episode, with one year more of a gap of 58 years. The final character from 2018 is the Justice League villain Neuron, debuting in Legend of Tomorrow Season 4 Episode 8, with a 23 year gap. 2019 is the year where we finally get debuts from the DCEU, those being two from the same movie. Shazam saw the debuts of Mary Marvel and Shazam Jr., or Captain Marvel Jr., both of whom have the largest gaps in this video. Mary Marvel debuted in the comics 77 years prior, and Captain Marvel or Shazam Jr. debuted in the comics 78 years prior, which is one of the biggest gaps we've seen in any of these videos. Not the biggest, but definitely one of, and also the biggest from this video. Swamp Thing's first and only season came out in 2019 and saw the live action debuts of a couple different Justice League Dark or just magical heroes, including in the first episode, Madame Xanadu, who has a 41 year gap, in the second episode, Blue Devil with a 35 year gap, and finally, the Phantom Stranger in the fifth episode, who debuted in the comics 67 years prior. 2019 ended with the Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover, which saw the debut of a couple different characters, as well as in the seasons leading up to the Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover, starting with The Flash Season 6 Episode 3, seeing the debut of Pariah with a 34 year gap, although at the time he was only Harrison Nash Wells and wouldn't become known as Pariah until the Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover, or right before then. Still though, it's a 34 year gap. There's also Sue Dearbun slash Sue Dibney in The Flash Season 6 Episode 6, who who, just like Adam Strange, has been an honorary member of the Justice League, so I'll count her here, especially since she won't be considered for any other video, there won't be an elongated man video, but she has a 58 year gap. Right before the crossover, the Anti-Monitor appeared for the first time in a setup scene that was at the end of all the episodes of the Arrowverse shows that came out before the Crisis, but also that was only as a voice. He didn't appear physically for a few more weeks in the crossover itself. Still though, it's 2019, so the gap doesn't change, and that is 34 years. The crossover itself saw the debut of Jonathan Kent, the son of Clark and Lois, who would later become Superboy slash Superman in the comics, while in the Arrowverse, that actual baby would never be seen again, an alternate universe version of him would kind of be split into two, those being Jonathan and Jordan Kent, with Jonathan sharing the character's name while Jordan shares more of the character himself, the fact that he has superpowers and he's going to become Superboy and potentially Superman. Both can be considered an adaptation of John Kent, but technically the baby who appears in Crisis on Infinite Earths is the character's first comic debut. I'm counting it for this video because recently he became the leader of the Justice League, although it was brief, he did do so, and he was never really a member of the Teen Titans. Oh, and he has a very small gap of just four years. Finally, for 2019, and still in the crossover, is Ryan Choi, debuting in Crisis on Infinite Earths Part 3, who has a 13 year gap. He wouldn't be seen as the Atom until the Armageddon crossover, and that was also an alternate future, but it's still the same character, so obviously it's counted. 
Only one character made their live action debut in the year 2020, that's Kamiya Hoshi aka Dr. Light who debuted in The Flash Season 6 Episode 10. She has a 35 year gap. There was another version of Dr. Light who appeared on The Flash a couple seasons earlier, and up until Kamiya Hoshi's live action debut, she was considered the only adaptation, but considering an actual Kamiya Hoshi appeared, that nullifies that Dr. Light as an adaptation even though she was much much better. If you're wondering why the other Dr. Light, the Arthur Light version of Dr. Light isn't in this video, it's because he's much more of a Teen Titans villain than a Justice League villain, even if he has clash with the Justice League at times. 2021 saw the live action debut of Despero in The Flash Season 8 Episode 1. He can be considered a bit of a Flash villain, but he's definitely much more so a Justice League villain and strictly a Justice League villain. He has a 61 year gap. Also in The Flash Season 8 Episode 6, the Chinese version of The Flash, Avery Ho, who is the main Flash in an offshoot Justice League team, Justice League China, is the only member from that team to ever appear in live action, appearing in The Flash Season 8 Episode 6 with just a six year gap, although we haven't seen her as The Flash yet. And finally, Naomi got her OTV show, Naomi McDuffie aka Powerhouse, who was a main member of the Justice League for like a year in the comics. She has a three year gap. And then in Naomi Season 1 Episode 6, a character named Captain Comet appeared, who is a member of the Justice League, or at least the Justice League Reserves, and would definitely never get another opportunity to appear in another video, and he has a 71 year gap. So that is it for every single character, but there is still two more things to do. Go over the top 5 longest and the top 5 shortest list of who took the longest and shortest amount of time to get to live action, and if you noticed and you've been paying attention, then you already know that the number 1 on each list are from the same group, they're very similar characters. So let's start with the top 5 shortest list. In 5th place is Avery Ho with 6 years, in 4th place is Jaime Reyes aka the Blue Beetle with 5 years, in 3rd place is John Henry Irons aka Steel, as well as John Kent aka Superboy aka Superman, as well as Bruce Wayne aka Batman, all 3 of whom have a 4 year gap. In 2nd place is Naomi McDuffie aka Powerhouse with a 3 year gap, and finally in 1st place is actually a tie between Caitlyn Snow aka Killer or just Frost, as well as Captain Marvel slash Shazam, also known as Billy Batson, with just a one year gap. Moving on to the top 5 longest, we start with Hawkgirl at 70 years. Fourth place is Captain Comet, who isn't really a very well known character, but regardless, he took 71 years to appear in live action. Then in third place is Jim Harper, aka Guardian, with a 74 year gap. Second place is Mary Marvel, who has a 77 year gap. And at the complete opposite end of the spectrum from the last list, another Captain Marvel is at the top of the list as Captain Marvel Jr took 78 years. Both lists have Captain Marvel at number one, one took the shortest amount of time, and the other took the largest. So that is it for this video, not doing a long intro since this is a crazy long video already, this will take me forever to edit, so good luck to me for editing this video, but also for you for any endeavor you have in life. Thanks for watching, goodbye.